On today's show, we'll be discussing the things to look for and the things to look out for when considering a real estate partnership. First off, are you currently a part of a partnership? Do you have a business partner? Have you ever considered getting a business partner? We're gonna go through the five tips that will really, really help you. This is great for anybody who's in the real estate industry. Check it out right now. Hey guys, today we are discussing the five most important things to consider when starting a real estate partnership. Although you really can consider some of these things in any business that you're in, that you are looking for some sort of partner or, or some sort of help, uh, a lot of the things that we're gonna discuss are gonna be geared towards maybe a real estate agent or a real estate broker who wants to team up with another agent and maybe start a team yep. and create a partnership that way. Uh, this is good for anyone who wants to start a real estate investment company or has a real estate investment company and wants to uh, you know, bring on a partner. Or if it's just a straight one-off deal where let's say I bring the money, you bring the deal, and we have some sort of uh, transparent partnership where we do profit splitting, that works great too. But we are gonna gear this towards real estate investing um, or real estate brokerage and hey, let's be creative and figure out kind of what makes a good partner. Yeah, for sure. So first things first, your goals need to be in line with one another. Um, and, and there can be different goals in real estate. Like for example, are you looking to um, you know, fix and sell properties this year for that kind of profit, which is fine. Um, is it a long-term play? And sometimes people even conflict in the same deal. A friend of mine develops apartment buildings in Arlington, Virginia, and he was saying that the capital investors, there's a number of them because they do pretty big stuff, so they have to you know, pull their money together. Some people want to hold and some people want to sell as condos. Yeah. Every project it comes up, divergent agendas. So, I mean, it's tough when you're talking about a dozen people or something like that, but when you're talking two, which is you know more common for a partnership, just get your goals lined up. Yeah, I think that's probably the most important thing. I mean, it's kind of weird to, to say this, especially on camera, but a lot of people, the financial outcome of your projects is not their number one goal. And I know you may think like, how can that be? Well, someone may say that, but then when you kind of dive in and work on a relationship, it's, listen, we can't, put an extra $10,000 of improvements in this house, although it will be the best house if we do it, but we do not have that in the budget to do that. You need to, you need to follow the game plan. So obviously you kind of learn a lot related to, to people's goals, but like what Chris said, you know, maybe a long-term play, maybe a short-term play. And the tricky part about partnerships in general is people's situations change. Their marital situations, their financial situations, their personal goals, and, it's, and, and that's hard when that happens. I'll give you, for example, let's say you both have two full-time jobs, you wanna start investing in real estate, and all of a sudden you say, listen, we're, just gonna, we're not gonna take any of the money out of the company, we're gonna just roll, roll it in. We don't need the money out, we each have, have full-time income, we're gonna, let's say we make $20,000 on a flip, we're gonna put it in the company and we're gonna roll it and roll it and roll it. Well, that's great right now, but what happens in the future? All of a sudden, maybe someone says, hey, I wanna do this full-time, and the other person says, I don't wanna do this full-time, but I'm gonna need the money out, this person wants to keep the money in. Just things to consider. Again, there's no right or wrong, but these are things that consider you have to consider when creating this partnership yeah you can't predict the future but you know do your best to address all this kind of stuff up front um, okay number two complementary skill sets it's important to be I think good at some of the same stuff and also good at different kinds of things and complement one another and have, try and shoot for that one plus one equals three dynamic yeah yeah I mean all of a sudden you can't be a gangster rock star and then bring in someone down here that maybe only knows this little small bit of the industry, yeah, they're gonna help you kind of short term, but if you guys don't have aligned skill sets or stuff that, hey, I'm really good at this, and I'm really good at this, and I'm really good at this, and I'm really good at this. But if you're really, really good at this, or this other person's really, really good at this, and that other person is not really good at much of anything, it's just it's a disaster waiting to happen. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, number three, is in general having a similar ability level like Jason was saying, you can have different skill sets and be good at different stuff, but you have to be somewhere in the same neighborhood. Like you can't have Mark Cuban with like some local real estate smell. Like and if that, that yeah, and, and and if you do, it's got to be aligned accordingly, right? Like mm -hmm. you have you you know part of this is you know really identifying what's what of, of who's responsible for what. Damn, it's you not easy. listen, you can partner with Mark Cuban, and if he says, hey, I'm going to put up 200 grand, and I'm going to get a small piece of this, and you're going to do all the heavy lifting. No problem. That is a fine partnership. That being said, it's got to be aligned accordingly and, and planned for. Yep. Um, that brings us to number four, your job description and your action plan. 
who's doing what, who's bringing what kind of resources. It's very common, like Jason just said, that you have a money partner and an operating partner. Like if that's the deal, just make sure you know that's the deal. And also be mindful that could change down the road. So whatever that job description and action plan is, like when you're, when you're in your startup kind of phase, and also when you hit the ground running, it has to be lined up. Um, if you're both operating partners, for example, you need to be somewhere in the same neighborhood in terms of work schedule and everything else because people are going to perceive things like that. Like, you know, if somebody does 70 hour weeks and somebody does 10, like it's not going to be all that compatible. So just who's doing what and the workload and volume and everything else should be in the same ballpark. Yeah, especially, you know, who's kind of front of the house, who's back of the house, depending on what type of operation you are. You know, a lot of us who start businesses have very heavy sales backgrounds or we're into sales and we're into, you know, True. making money, growing, selling, stuff like that. And don't get me wrong, it's good to have that same type of partner, but sometimes you could clash when you do something like that. You know, sometimes it's, hey, I wanna be front of the house and I wanna grind and I wanna grow and I wanna bring everybody into this front door. And then after you're in the front door, I want you to take them down and I want you to, to, to operate and manage and manage it. You know, think of like a real estate team um, and you're great at sales, you're great at, at bringing in new clients. Uh, and then maybe your partner is, manages, you know, maybe more of like a CFO role, role, right? Like they manage the finance yeah. stuff, they manage the accounting stuff, they manage the operations, they take it from here all the way, all the way to the closing. There's a lot of situations like that. So again, a lot of this just kind of goes back to the beginning of setting the expectations, setting, setting the goals and making sure you're right, uh, really aligned of exactly what you're doing. You know, obviously you can change things up, uh, you know, but you know, when we started, for instance, a lot of the stuff that we did overlapped, right? And then we tried to have more, yep. per, not permanent roles, but I identified more defined fine, roles yeah. of exactly who was doing what. Yep. And, and our fun. jobs and our roles every day overlap. Like I'm here, Chris is here, and over here in the middle, we overlap. I overlap on some of his stuff, he overlaps on some of my stuff. That's a healthy relationship. But you can't just question everything that somebody does. Like if, you, if he's responsible for doing something, he's responsible for doing stuff. I can't question it. I can talk to him about it and say, hey, why'd you do this? Or maybe you know, we can figure this out. But if he's running point, and if you're letting that person be responsible for something, let them be responsible for it. Yeah, definitely. Um, so the idea of compatibility is number five and kind of a summary of the other ones. And think about it a little bit down the road after you've gotten into the business a little bit and you're operating and things are happening and everything else. Think about the different ways in which partners can be compatible. Like just your basic philosophy in business, like what do you want to achieve at the end? Because people do have different goals. Like Jason said, some people it's a financial goal and some people it's not. Most people will say it is, but then they don't act accordingly. Uh, some people are just into the hustle and hard work. Some people are into like, I own a company for the ego reasons. All, we've seen all these scenarios, they happen. Um, so the compatibility, look at that part of it. And then also, like I said, the, the other things, do you operate in similar ways? Like do you have you know, somewhat similar schedules and like travel and like you can't necessarily be somewhere for three months out of the year, stuff like that, you know, just compatibility across the board. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna be married to this person. You're a partner with this person. I mean, consider the word, I mean, think about the, the term partnership in general. Can you get along with this person? You're gonna see them every single day. You're gonna have, you have a lot in common. Maybe behind the scenes you don't have a lot in common, but you, but you kind of do, right? Do you have similar philosophies, uh, similar backgrounds? A lot of that stuff is taken in consideration. And, you know, and we know so many real estate investors that say, oh, well, this person's just putting up the money and I'm responsible for everything else. That's great, I, and, and, that, and that's fine, and I hope that, hope that works out, but there's a much more deeper approach to this than, you know, hopefully that works on that first deal, but if you're really trying to create a business and turn that into, thing, into things, just like Chris said, related to compatibility, you gotta make sure you, everything, everything is aligned and you really are on the exact same page on a regular basis, or if not, it's just gonna be toxic, and you're just gonna wanna get rid of that person, you're gonna do whatever you gotta do to either screw them or figure out a way to just get out of it. So screw them, not in that tense, screw, the, <laughs> screw them uh, by, by you know, telling them to go pound sand. Yeah, so if you could guys, uh, give us a partnership story of yours, uh, a success story, maybe one when things went sideways and why, just so everyone else who's uh, checking out the video or listening to this on audio can, can learn from your story as well. Absolutely, as always, like, comment, share, subscribe, thanks again.